So today we'll be looking at Ophthalmic Neonatal. So it's basically looking something like that. Uh, so it's an infant, of course, a neonate. Uh, you have discharge, you see a lot of crusting and you can see the eyelids are shut. Okay, that's like the most horrible situation. Now, you need to know this, why? Because it happens in the first four weeks of infant life. That's critical. It is known as a horrible cause of blindness and since they are newborn kids, we don't want to give them that. Now, the treatment and prevention is quite simple. Uh, uh, typical hygiene measures and then a few antibiotics that we need to know. It's preventable and still it's deadly. So let's get into it. Now, ophthalmic neonatal. Uh, it's the conjunctival inflammation within 23 to 30 days of life. So depending upon the author, 20 to 30 days. So first month, that's when it's called a neonate. Now it's also called infantile purulent conjunctivitis, neonatal conjunctivitis. Now, pathophysiology. Now, conjunctiva. Normally, it's a non keratinized squamous epithelium, thin and richly vasculized. When inflammation happens, there's going to be dilation of blood vessels, chemosis, and secretion. Okay, now why does this happen? It happens because of lack of immunity, a tissue, either tissue immunity has been decreased or the local immunity, like the tears, have been decreased. Now, it's a conjunctivitis. Remember that it's not a special condition, it's a conjunctivitis, but it can also lead to complications like corneal perforations. Yeah. Now etiology, now we have septic and aseptic, aseptic we get the chemical ones and in the septic we get the living ones, so organisms. Aseptic you have silver nitrate, antibiotics and antiseptics. Now those are actually really interesting topics, we'll get to them in their uh, respective slides. Now in the septics you have Neisseria gonorrhea, given, chlamydia trachomatics, horrible, horrible thing to deal with, staphylococcus, streptococcus and all those normal bacteria. Now we have Pseudomonas, Klebsiella and all this and in viral we only have one to look at here that's HSV2, herpes simplex 2. Now why herpes simplex 2, why not 1? Herpes simplex 2 because since the baby is passing through the genital tract there is chance of it actually getting the infection from the birth canal if the mother is infected. So we are looking at HSV2 not 1. Now, when does this happen? Before delivery, during delivery and after delivery. So that's when it happens and when we look at the treatment and prevention, we look at the same three things. Before delivery, during delivery and after delivery. So before delivery, if the mother herself is infected, there is a chance of infection passing from the body tissue into the place where the baby is resting. Now during delivery, since the organism is present in the birth canal and after delivery, if there is immediate contact contamination of the baby's eyes that's going to be a problem so it can happen with contaminated surfaces fingers towels or even the things which have come out of the birth canal yeah now presentation how does a person with ophthalmic neuter present to you it's going to be in 30 day less than 30 day person now one more thing you have to notice depending upon the duration of presentation you can distinguish between the organisms which have actually caused the disease. We'll get to that later. But remember that. Please look at the duration between the birth and presentation of symptoms. Now, since it's a conjunctivitis, you're going to have conjunctivitis, of course, uh, tortuous blood vessels and all those. Um, then there's going to be discharge. Of course, there's going to be discharge. Now, the type of discharge will vary. Okay. If it's pseudomonas, or any other bacteria, it's going to have mucopurulent discharge. If it's gonococcal, it's going to be heavily purulent and there's going to be swollen lid, there's going to be corneal environment at later stages and you might also suspect for associated systemic infection in case of certain bacteria. Yeah. So this is basically what it's going to be looking like. You can see that there are, there's horrible conjunctivitis, you can see that there is matting of eyelids because of the discharge and then there is, uh, I think, corneal uh, presentations also can be seen. Blood vessels are prominent on the medial side, yeah. So typical presentation, but just don't let it get to this horrible stage, yeah. Now, if it's chemical conjunctivitis, so what have we talked about, if it's silver which was previously used, so silver nitrate. Um, it's called Creed's method, previously used, currently discontinued. Why? Because the things which was previously used as an antibiotic to 
as a prophylaxis it has become the cause of conjunctivitis so it was just banned now there is going to be mild irritation and then there is going to be tearness and redness but most importantly there is going to be a history of use of irritant you can't have chemical conjunctivitis without having a chemical now chlamydial infection 5 days to 14 days what does that mean 1 to 2 weeks it's not going to happen immediately 1 to 2 weeks means it's chlamydial infection chlamydia trachomatis and there is going to be bilateral unilateral watery discharge which becomes copious and purulent later on so it's going to be copious watery discharge now gonorrheal infection when you look at this look at gonorrheal infection 3 to 5 days that's immediate okay 1 to 2 weeks that's chlamydia if it's immediate it's going to be neisseria gonorrhea 3 to 5 days incubation chemosis purulent discharge and associated keratitis and perforation gonorrhea is horrible perforation corneal perforation see now viral incubation 2 weeks viral diseases have a longer incubation period so if it's 1 to 2 weeks go with chlamydial it's bacterial now gonorrheal it's immediate and viral it's 2 weeks of incubation and since it's herpes simplex you're going to have vesicle formation that's a typical presentation of herpes simplex virus now this is a blood smear which has been taken neutrophils neutrophils lots of neutrophils but in the neutrophils you can see diplococci diplococci which means the diagnosis would be gonorrhea now provisional diagnosis now you have to be uh, confirmatory on what you're actually doing when you have to start a treatment first you have to be sure on which organism it is so chemical irritant you discard that there's going to be history of uh, chemical usage and uh, it's going to be mild irritation self-limiting don't worry about that when you have septic conjunctivitis you have to look at what type of bacteria we're dealing with okay because if it's <coughs> trichomatis or if it's uh, gonococcal going to be horrible if it's herpes then again the whole modality changes you can't give antibiotics then again it does not mean that you can give antibiotics you have to again select the antibiotics so for gonorrhea chocolate agar or thyroid martin agar specific chlamydia gene sustain or culture other bacterial infection most commonly as i said it's going to be staphylococcus or streptococcus in the previous slides so you do a gram stain then do a blood agar so you can easily diagnose for staphylococcus streptococcus by blood agar and if you see vesicles go for sang smear you get herpetic infection yeah now complication is corneal perforation and we have treatment which is either prophylactic or curative either prevent it try to prevent it if not deal with it properly now prophylaxis antenatal screening of the mother and if she's infected clean the genital tract clean her infection before the delivery actually occurs so that the baby is not infected during its journey through the birth canal okay then again the measures would be like maintain proper hygienic conditions the newborn's uh, eyelid should be cleansed and dried postnatal measures you have 1% tetracycline ointment uh, silver nitrate solution again creeds method not used anymore and uh, single injection of ceftriaxone 50 mg by kg im or iv if the mother is untreated for active gonococcal infection now curative since chemical is self limiting you discard that um, neonatal inclusion conjunctivitis topical tetracycline and erythromycin qid for 3 weeks so the treatment is going to take 3 weeks if it's bacterial you can start them on broad spectrum antibiotic drops and uh, ointment 2 weeks and if it's um, hsv uh, antiviral can be given so icyclovir or topical is systematic now treatment of gonococcal ophthalmia neoneterum is of high importance that's a horrible uh, diagnosis to make and uh, it should be dealt with properly now you have both options of giving them systemic antibiotics or topical antibiotics now eye drops hourly to the discharge now penicillin susceptible cases in form of drops uh, that actually has been currently people have not found penicillin to be reliable because again a lot of people penicillin was rampant uh, times ago uh, the resistance has been developed so don't know if people still follow that but still in susceptible cases it can be given 5000 to 10000 units by ml for the first 30 minutes once per minute for the second 30 minutes once per 5 minutes and next 30 minutes till the infection is controlled once per 30 minutes now atropine sulfate is given in case of corneal vomit it's not curative in any matter but it helps to reduce the pain now systemic therapy you have ceftriaxone cefotaxime ciprofloxacin norfloxacin and even penicillins as well 
So that has been Aftal Menu Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.